Hello everybody, um, I hope you all can hear me. This is Shweta um, and I am dialing in from India, so it's quite early here, but I am here from Semantic Climate to talk about how we've been uh, building a climate knowledge explorer using Wikimedia tools. Um, a little bit about me, I am a volunteer developer and program manager at Semantic Climate and I've been working with Semantic Climate for close to three years now. So at Semantic Climate, what we've been doing is we've been building um, Climate Knowledge Explorer, liberating climate-related facts from scientific literature. So in the next 15 minutes, I want to talk about um, what we do at Semantic Climate, how we integrate Wikimedia tools like Wikidata and Wikibase in our pipeline, and how we work um, uh, as an open science project. And uh, I'd also like to hint a little bit about our future events. With that, let's get started. So the information to save the world from climate crisis is already available in these amazing reports that the UN puts out. So we are all aware of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, and they have several sets of uh, reports. Uh, for example, they've got Working Group 1, which talks about physical effects of climate change on Earth, Working Group 2, um, that talks about effect of climate change on uh, natural and human systems, WTG3 is on mitigation, and similarly, there are three other sets of special reports, uh, one's on climate change in land, one's on uh, global warming, um, and um, uh, finally, we also have a, a special report on ocean and cryosphere. Um, and very recently, um, IPCC put out what's called synthesis report, uh, which basically um, synthesized all the key findings from these three reports, uh, WG1, WG2, WG3, and the special reports. Um, and I think the UN Secretary General called synthesis report the surviving guide for humanity. But the problem is that all of this is a lot of information. These reports are really huge. Like, you know, there are seven reports. They've got multiple chapters. It's more than 15 pages long. It's got so many terms. Um, and it's written in a technical and jargon-filled language that you and I may not be able to immediately understand. So the climate information is actually rendered inaccessible to most of us. And worse, it's only available as PDFs for the most part. So how do we get this information from these locked up PDFs and uh, make it make it make these climate fa facts available to everybody? So that's where semantic climate comes into picture. With the help of uh, Wikimedia, semantic climate is making climate info information more accessible. So in the next set of slides, I'm going to describe the uh, pipeline uh, of our um, uh, project. So here it goes. So like I said, we have uh, different sets of climate reports usually available as PDFs. So our tool called by Amy converts these PDFs into HTML. Now HTML is much more easier to work with when it, uh, at least uh, for the software and also for humans. Um, so once we have that HTML and it takes a lot of effort to get there, we can do a lot of interesting things. So uh, I, along with some of my team members and Daniel Meachin, I don't know if he's here, but he's here. Uh, hello. Um, so um, we have developed a tool uh, called Doc Analysis that um, in extracts information, um, textual information, um, with the help of what we call dictionaries. Now, um, I'll talk about dictionaries in the subsequent slides, uh, but dictionaries uh, are basically a set of terms that uh, we think are important. So it could be all the abbreviations that are mentioned in these climate uh, uh, reports, um, or it could be all the uh, climate-related terms or the glossary that um, you know IPCC gives us. Um, so we can use that to search the literature uh, or the search the paragraphs in these IPCC reports to index them um, and also to uh, get co-occurrences. For example, if you want to, uh, you know, find out which all paragraphs mention uh, a geographical area that you're interested in and a specific climate term, uh, our, our tools 
can easily do that for you. So essentially through this pipeline, what we are doing is we're going from the, the dumb PDF to um, climate facts, right? So before I move ahead and talk about what we do with these climate facts, um, I just want to take a quick detour to explain about dictionaries. So dictionaries, like I said, are a set of terms with unique Wikidata identifiers. So um, let's take greenhouse gas, for example. It's got a QID. I mean, I'm sure we all know what Wikidata is, so I'm not going to talk more about it. And more importantly, uh, Wikidata gives us information about the specific term in different languages, right? And our dictionary, since it's linked to Wikidata, also has information about specific term in different languages. And since, uh, and we use these data to annotate the paragraphs. And therefore, when we do the linking, we can actually display what a specific jargon, jargon term means in a language that the reader is comfortable with. So this is an example of the annotated paragraphs. As you can see, the term CCS, uh, I don't know if you can see it yet. Okay. The term CCS here is hyperlinked. And if you click on it, it will take you to uh, Wikidata. And if you do not know what CCS is, you can just immediately understand what it means. It's carbon capture and storage. It's, um, you know, the process of capturing and storing waste carbon dioxide, right? So this is one of the use cases of um, being able to link into Wikidata and semantifying the um, paragraphs from IPCC reports. The next thing that I also briefly touched upon when I spoke about the pipeline is when we have these HTML, we can use both um, supervised and unsupervised uh, methods to extract key phases um, and correlations, uh, co-occurrences co like I described in uh, the previous slide. So with all this inf useful information, what are we doing? And uh, like I said, semantic climate is semantifying these climate facts. So we have these climate facts. So what do we do with it? That's where um, uh, Wikibase comes into picture. Uh, back in April this year, Egon and Lars Willikargen, along with Peter Murray Rust, who is one of the co-founders of Semantic Climate, sat together to set up uh, a Wikibase instance for us. Um, and I'm sure you all have um, uh, had a chance to learn more about Wikibase in yesterday's talks and so on. Um, so what we do is that uh, we take these paragraphs uh, which we call statements or climate facts and put them in our wiki base instance. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say 2.2.2c is the paragraph and it's got its own um, QID. And um, in the statements, we tell, okay, this is an instance of a section. It, it's a part of this bigger subsection and um, it mentions these keywords and, um, um, uh, you know, uh, it also is, um, talking about the specific geographical location and so on and so forth. Um, and these climate facts, uh, thank, thanks to IP, IPCC, have confidence level that we could be making use of and uh, you know, we could be documenting that in, um, in this um, item page, for example. Um, so with all this information curated on um, this open database, we could be doing a lot of interesting things. Um, so, through this, what we can do is you could explore the climate facts in however way you want. Essentially, this becomes your climate knowledge explorer. Let's say, for example, you're interested in knowing which all paragraphs from IPCC reports mention a specific geographical area that you're interested in. Um, and you can write a quick Sparkle query to do that once we have all the information in our Wikibase. Um, and second, let's say you're interested in building a knowledge graph of um, all of the, uh, based on um, which paragraph uh, references, which other paragraph from the IPCC report. And you can do that again by writing a Sparkle query. In other words, what we are doing is transforming the way anybody would read IPCC reports. Um, and it, this can help them build newer connections that otherwise wouldn't have been possible with just simple, simple PDF reports, right? So this is what we've been doing with Semantic Climate. Now I would um, like to talk a bit more about um, what we, um, how we work. Um, so we have been running a lot of um, hackathons and it's driven by all these amazing volunteers. Our 
you know, our, our project is mainly run by volunteers. So in the past, we've been part of Hackathon Piaget, which we've won. This happened in um, the University of Geneva. This happened at University of Geneva. And after this, we ran our own hackathon um, uh, in Delhi. Uh, uh, this was fully online in September. And very recently, we ran our um, in-person hackathon in Delhi with about 30 people, you know, uh, trying out our wiki-based instance, trying out our tools and so on and so forth. We have more pictures uh, in the subsequent slides. Finally, we were also a part of Fritki, basically, uh, where we had about uh, 10 people, I guess, uh, trying out our tools and um, testing them. So this was in uh, this was during Hackathon Piaget, where we had people run our Google Collab notebooks that uh, to, uh, you know took them through the entire uh, the pipeline. Um, and here we also uh, had people who tried this out and translated the documentation into different languages. And this was truly learning by doing. Right. This was our Delhi event, um, uh, September. And finally, this is our climate knowledge hunt in May 2023, where we had people, we had different breakout rooms and people tried running our wiki base, tried, you know, writing Sparkle queries, um, you know, used our tools, talk analysis by Amy, by get papers and so on. And these hackathons also produced a lot of volunteers for us. Um, so for example, we have uh, Shivani and Yasin who were part of our climate knowledge hunt in May, uh, now working with us um, and working on specific chapters. Shivani, for example, works uh, closely in Ladakh and she is interested in high mountains chapter. Similarly, Yasin works on food security. And all these people have been making YouTube videos to explain what their chapters mean um, and they, and they They've been able to understand more about these chapters through both manual reading and with the help of our tools. So do check them out. Uh, I've put the link in the uh, slide and I'll share the slide, slides soon as well. So what next? Um, so we would love to advance our technology and continue building uh, the community. So we are part of many other events in the future as well. We have, uh, we, we are part of uh, this uh, workshop Codata is organizing in September, 2023, where people uh, I'm sure will get to Similarly, we're being part of Park Camp Open Science in Berlin. Um, I think this is being hosted by uh, Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, and finally, um, I'll be at UN DataCon in uh, November this year. This is happening in Geneva, and we would love to, uh, you know, explore, uh, continue building our climate knowledge explorer with the help of people we meet there as well. And maybe we could be running more hackathons with Wikimedia in the future. Um, so yeah. Please do check out our website. Um, we are very active on our website. Uh, you can check out uh, more about our events, test our tools, try out uh, our wiki-based instance. And yeah, so please do come join us in building this climate knowledge explorer to make climate ac uh, knowledge accessible to anybody. You can you know, be exploring the content, for example, become chapter champions, or you could, uh, uh, you know, improve our tools. Uh, we follow what's called open notebook philosophy. So all of what we do is put out online as soon as it's done. Or you could be a part of our community process. We could engage us through various events that we are part of, um, or, you know, just test our tools, improve documentation, whatever. And we would love to have you on board. So this is the larger theme. I would like to thank each and everybody who are, whose pictures are put up here and people who are um, I mean, we have had over 50 people work uh, with us over the past three years, and I have not been able to include all of them here. I spe specifically like to thank Peter Murray Rust and Gitanjali Yadav, who are the co-founders of uh, Simulate. Um, yeah, with that, I'd like to thank uh, Wikimania for giving me this opportunity. Here are some of the useful links, and I'll share the slides. Thank you so much for your time, Shweada. We actually have a question for you from Event Yay. The question is okay. how, do you have any ideas about how to enrich Wikidata based on um, the information you've provided today? Thank you. Yes, um, we've done this before. Um, uh, let me go back. So with the tool called Doc Analysis, what we were able to do is use um, semi-supervised searching to extract information from the scientific literature. So we also work with scientific literature that are, that's available at XML. And what we did uh, with doc analysis, uh, along with, uh, this was the work that we that I did with uh, Daniel Meechit, um, is that we were able to um, get information about the ethics uh, that were mentioned in the scientific uh, literature using um, the Wikidata uh, driven dictionary that we had created um, 
for organizations. And so for all the papers that we were able to analyze, we got the organization that had given ethics consent for that specific um, study. And like you know, Wikidata has, you know, uh, all these scientific papers indexed as well, I mean, as an item as well. So what we were able to do is then add information about the ethics for these papers. And we could do the same with, let's say, all the chemicals that are mentioned in a paper. We could extract those from our pipeline and put it back into Wikidata. Um, or uh, so, let's for example, we also have tool that um, analyzes the, you know, gets the abbreviations from the reports automatically. This, there's a Python package which lets us do that. And we could be thinking about um, putting in um, uh, all the abbreviations that we extract from these IPCC reports into Wikidata if they don't already exist. So yes, we've already, you know, been able to enhance, enrich Wikidata, and we would love to continue doing that. I hope that answers the question. I believe it did. Yeah, thank you so much. And with that, we're going to head to the break. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you so much.